This UCLA Bruin team knows what it's like to win an NCAA title. They have done it twice. In fact, USC and UCLA are the only two programs in the NCAA era to win a national championship. And as we said, USC has already made their way to the championship duel. Want to let you know how this duel will work. We're playing in flights today, so pairs two and four will go first. Once they're done, we'll see the ones, threes, and fives play to decision. Everything else is the same. The first school to win on three courts wins the duel and heads over to that national championship duel. You take a look at the lineups here. This should be really interesting, Holly. Well, lots of exciting matchups. A lot of these pairs have not played each other. Some have, but right now I'm looking at the ones and twos, looking forward to those particular matchups. Yeah, the twos for Florida State have been so consistent. Meanwhile, for this UCLA team, Christine, a Beatles song has never meant so much to the Bruins. <laughs> yeah, as you know, uh, competition, especially at this level, can often come down to the mental game. So a lot of coaches implement things to help their teams work through that UCLA head coach Stein Metzger has actually given his team a very interesting visualization. He tells them to imagine themselves as a yellow submarine having the waves wash over them. That's the stress, the outside noise. So if you guys need anything to get through stressful situations, just take that with you. I think that might stress me out more. I'm a little claustrophobic. But I it, am too. It, it works for UCLA and like Christine said, I mean the mental game is going to be tough because it is so much pressure on the sand right now. Well, they're similar in terms of talent. It's all about the mental game and who shows up and who performs. These two teams have met twice already this season. UCLA took both of those meetings. It was very close in the last meeting. It was Monterey and Powers. It actually came down to the fives. They were playing at the fives at the time. So again, starting with the twos and the fours, and we check in. Jaden Whitmarsh and Devin Newberry taking on Elena Chacon, Madison Fitzpatrick. Interesting note about this Florida State pair. They're the first team in the history of this tournament, the short history, to win five matches. And I think the addition of that single elimination round in the 16 teams helped them do that, but they have been on fire playing really high level volleyball. Such a good rhythm and chemistry together. Yeah, these two teams, these two players, Chacon and Fitzpatrick, as Elena Chacon goes back to serve, they played in this tournament together at the Ones back in 2019. They're used to the pressure, and once they were reunited this season, it was really hard for Brooke Niles to break them up, so she didn't. There's an ace for Elena Chacon! Best friends and roommates, Chacon and Fitzpatrick, their rhythm, just the way they move together, it's like a dance, and they were touching everything yesterday defensively for Florida State. Playing to 21 in the first two sets, you have to win by two. It is best two out of three. Power coming in from Jaden Whitmarsh. Really important for Jaden Whitmarsh to stay aggressive offensively, especially against this defensive team because they're a little bit undersized and they play to that shot game. Reminder, two courts in action right now. If you want, are looking for the fours, you can catch them streaming live on the ESPN app. We'll have all courts streaming live there all day. And then it's Chacon into the block of Devin Newberry. Devin Newberry is a very strong blocker, but Chacon challenging her at the net, and it pays off for Florida State. Yeah, Elena Chacon, Brooke Niles told us, just so coachable, a great athlete. Going off the outside hand, smart use of the block. In comes Whitmarsh. Tight to the net. Chicken winged it up. And Devin Newberry found some open sand. Defensively, Florida State had an opportunity. Ball caught the net, and then UCLA takes advantage of this easy ball over. Devin Newberry, an offensive weapon, just pokes that down for the easy kill. You know, Holly, before this duel started, we were taking a look at the conditions. The wind a little bit different today. Yeah, this is the first day it's gone the other direction. It's very slight, so wind isn't such a factor today. So which side would be the good side today if there is one? Well, if you're going to see, look at the court, it's where it's the opposite direction. So it's our right side. Right now you see the bro. Uh, sorry. Florida State is on the better side now. Yeah, that means the wind in their face. You can be a little bit more aggressive on the good side. UCLA on the bad side right now with Jaden Whitmarsh serving. But again, not an aggressive wind. 
Nothing like we saw Friday. Crazy storms in the area. Off of the block and out point for the Seminoles. Devin Newberry tells her partner, I've got that one. She's lined up perfectly for that. Just has to be a little bit more disciplined with her hands, turning it back into the court. Chacon goes at Whitmarsh. Jaden with the pokey, line up by Fitzpatrick. Quick return by Devin Newberry. Not much you can do with that. You hear the communication by Devin Newberry. She says right over Madison Fitzpatrick. Sees it, great touch. She just doesn't control it on her side of the net. Great read by Fitzpatrick. You know, we talked about the chemistry for Florida State, but a lot of chemistry on the UCLA side of the net too. These two players weren't playing together, and Jaden Whitmarsh actually called Stein Metzger and said, give us one practice together and let us know what you think. Yeah, and you can just tell their friendship. There's a lot of intensity, a lot of mutual respect, and they play really well together. They've actually moved up in the lineup. They were at threes earlier in the season and have moved up to twos. Right down the middle goes Madison Fitzpatrick. And credit to, to Stein Metzger for having that open line of communication with his players. Yeah, he, he was trying to find the right pairs. And sometimes the athletes know chemistry. And they wanted to show that they had really good chemistry together. And it paid off. Different for the coaches today, too, because with just two courts in action right now, they can have a coach on every court, whereas we were playing all five courts at once. And most teams only have three coaches. Up by Whitmarsh, here she comes. Pokey to the corner. Great body control by Jaden Whitmarsh. That set was tight to the net. She elevates. Devin Newberry with a little back bump set. Elevates and pokes that deep. Really great body control there. Yeah, and Holly, that's a great look at the poke shot because remember, you can't tip with an open hand on the beach. You're right, and for Jane Whitmarsh, she needed to hit that at the height of her jump to clear the block of Madison Fitzpatrick. We're going to break down that pokey coming up in between flights. Holly will explain it to us, so maybe you can walk away with a little more beach knowledge if you're one of our new fans. Great crowd here today. The energy is just amazing. It should be. There's so much on the line. Winner of this duel goes on to the championship duel. Nice block by Chacon. The up from Fitzpatrick, and then she's ready to attack. Madison Fitzpatrick, get it. Any tight balls right now, Florida State goes up super aggressive. I believe that's the only way you're going to beat Devin Newberry at the net because she is really long. Devin Newberry can get a little bit more aggressive and get some of those balls, but that's what you want to do as a blocker. You want to own the net. So identical scores at both courts in action. We'll keep you posted on what goes on at the twos, but we want to check in with the fours for the first time. Marley Monserey, Riley Powers facing Jordan Polo and Morgan Chacon, the sister of Elena for Florida State. This is Riley Powers serving. Jordan Polo. The transfer from Cal. Jordan Polo, a fantastic student, graduated from Cal Berkeley in three years and is now, she's finished her, her MBA and she's working on a second degree. Yeah, graduated in three years from Cal with a degree in economics. Yes, quite impressive. That serve will be long from Morgan Chacon. And here is Marley Monterey. Now this duo, they have had some trouble here at the NCAA tournament, and it was just before Pac-12s that they moved from the fives to the fours. Yeah, Stein moved them up thinking he had a little bit more size and physicality at the fours with this pair. And they had a really nice run middle of the season for UCLA and the young team of Sophie Moore and Natalie Miskowski were struggling just a little bit, so he thought he'd switch it up. Yeah, you'll see that young pair, the teenagers, as they call them, at the fives when we play our second flight. Marley takes it. Here comes Montserrat. Down the line, ties it at nine. And for a first year beach volleyball player to poke that deep ball, that's so impressive. I mean, I know beach volleyball Olympians who aren't even good at the pokey. 
And she gets up there in the control to just go right over the defender's head. That's impressive. Marley Monterey, the starting setter for the Florida Gators, four seasons for Mary Wise on the indoor side, and then decided for her fifth season wanted something different and stepped onto the sand at UCLA. I love that she got outside her comfort zone and expanded. I mean, keep learning, right? And she has really improved rapidly with this UCLA beach volleyball program. Well, Stein Metzger told us there are two things that we knew that we would get from Marley Monterey. She's a great learner. We knew that would, we would get that, and she would have a positive impact on everyone. Not sure what they would give, what she would give in the sand, but those two things were a given. And when he first saw her in January, he was like, yeah, I'm not sure it'll be good. Yeah. And then a month later, he's like, wow, she needs to be in the lineup. The bump set here to Riley Powers point for UCLA. Riley Power so good at hitting these spots that are just undiggable coffin corner. Morgan Chacon, yes, that was in. I think it grabbed the line. And that makes it 11 to 10 at the fours. The first flight underway in our semifinal here in Gulf Shores. Twos and fours are in action first. We're playing in flights today. After they're done, we'll see the ones, threes, and fives. This is a semifinal duel winner to the championship to face USC. Back to the twos we go. Jaden Whitmarsh, Devin Newberry for UCLA facing Elena Chacon and Madison Fitzpatrick. Jaden Whitmarsh, nobody there. Perfect placement. Great set and call by Devin Newberry, telling her partner nobody. And then Devin, uh, Jaden Whitmarsh knows what to do with it, dropping it nice and short away from the defender. Third meeting this season between Florida State and UCLA, but the pairs have changed up, especially on the UCLA side. Well, actually, both sides. Uh, for Brooke Niles, yeah. she likes to mix it up. This year, she's tried a bunch of new pairs looking for winning combinations. And also, Stein has changed things up more than usual. You were able to talk to Brooke. How is she feeling going into this one? She actually thought that the changes in terms of the pairs in the matchup worked in her favor. But she said, you know what? UCLA is really gritty, and so are we. So it's just going to depend on who shows up and executes the best. Poke shot, Devin Newberry. That's what I call owning the net. Devin Newberry is so capable. Anything that goes tight to the net, she's going to go up and grab. She gets that one first. And the ball has to clear the plane of the net for her to do that. And she waits for it and takes care of that poke. This time, Devin Newberry pulling off the net. And you know, she really took some big strides in her blocking last season with coach Jose Loyola really helped her with her blocking. Well, I think she's always been a good blocker, but just gaining confidence, a couple new tools, couple new moves. She mixes it up a lot, which I really like, giving the attacker on the other side of the net no idea of what she's doing. And Elena Chacon, she took the option. Jaden Whitmarsh is getting a little tentative. She's shooting the ball to what she thinks is open, and this Florida State team moves late and quickly, so she's got to be more aggressive with a quick hand on the ball to attack. Raises the tape. <laughs> Good serve from Madison Fitzpatrick service pressure and she just stood on the ground but she put enough pace on her serve that it clips the top of the tape and drops in front of Jane Whitmarsh. Whitmarsh able to scoop it but not get it over. Timeout at the twos. Only other court in action is the four so we'll swing over that way now. Tied up at 13. Now Riley Powers and Marley Monterey taking that one point advantage. We are playing to 21. Morgan Chacon, easy shot over. Marley Monterey is the blocker, needs to get that ball. 
Christine Williamson down on the sand with the fours. Yeah, this set has actually been a game of offense. Since they were tied at fives, FSU has eight kills. UCLA has seven. There's only two hitting errors for FSU and one service error for UCLA, and that's how they've been getting all those points. That all equals up to 14-14. So the last time out, FSU actually said that they want bigger swings from them and that they need more service pressure. Add some spin on the serves to make it harder for the UCLA squad to set. So those are side out points. You want to score what we call real points when you serve it and dig a ball and transition it. And that's what gives you the advantage. Oh, how about that power though, Morgan Chacon? That's a bigger swing for FSU. Yeah, that's what you want to see, especially in a point scoring opportunity. You want to go up and end that rally in your favor. Morgan Chacon, a talented indoor player, showing she can get it done on the beach as well. Yeah, she has split her career four years playing indoor and beach, and obviously she couldn't play beach last year because the indoor season finished in the spring. The season's overlapped. Great court vision there by Marley Monterey. FSU gave her that line. I don't know if the defender was late sliding over there, but she took advantage of it. And now Monterey will get the chance to serve here. Playing to 21 in the first two sets. It is close on both courts, tied here. Over at the twos, streaming on the ESPN app, it's a two-point game. Service error, Montserrat. I just thought about this, but Marley Montserrat played her indoor at, Vol at Florida, and Morgan Chacon, Florida State, so I'm sure they've matched up across the net indoors. Yeah, absolutely. It's a rivalry there. I feel like a lot of times, too, Florida State ends up playing Florida in the first round of the tournament. It seems that yes. way. Yes, they, they do regionally. Tough serve. One of the things Brooke Niles told me this morning is that they need to serve the ball tough today. And you see that service pressure paying off for Florida State, getting UCLA inside out trouble. We heard Christine tell us too in the last time out for Florida State, they had talked about swinging bigger and then also tougher serve. We've seen both so far. Yeah, I mean, they're responding. Brooke Niles Lucena having a little chat with her pair. Yeah, happy Mother's Day to her, too. She's the mother of three, right? Yes, yeah. Gunner, Cole, and Ryder, and her sister Emily is watching them at home, which is a full-time job. Yes. <laughs> but what a gift to Brooke. Fours are taking a seat. We go to the twos now, just a two-point game here. Chacon and Fitzpatrick with the advantage. Elena Chacon behind the service line. Whitmarsh, yes, in. Much more aggressive swing. If you're tentative, this Florida State team just scoops those balls up. So aggressive, some pace off your hand offensively, and that will pay off for Jordan Whitmarsh. That's an aggressive swing, too, from Chacon. Here comes Jaden Whitmarsh again. Nobody on for Whitmarsh, down the middle. I'll tell you, Devin Newberry for UCLA, number 13 in white, has made such great progress. Her transition setting is on fire. Look at that, great set to Jane Whitmarsh, who crushes it down the middle. Yeah, just a beautiful play for the Bruin pair. Love the fire from both these Bruins. Timeout here, 16 all. I love how close this is. It's close on both courts. Back to the fours we go. Chacon and Polo up by two. Monterey, open sand. Turn, look, and call. That's something Stein Metzger teaches his players. And that's after you set, you want to turn, see what the other team is doing, and give your partner a call. Right there, Riley Powers does a really nice job telling Marley Monterey what's open. TLC, turn, look, call. Everybody needs a little TLC. That's right. A little partner love. Oh, good hustle. How about that little scrappy play? Riley Powers slides under that ball and gets a break on the Florida State air. 4 touches tied at 17 
Jordan Polo. Polo over the block of Monterey, and it's a one-point advantage for Florida State. Jordan okay. Polo has worked really hard since coming to Florida State on her approach. And as a lefty, getting outside really sells that angle hit, opening up that little line pokey. So that's been a huge transition and a focus since becoming a Florida State player. And she's also put some extra time in the weight room, trying to be more dynamic with her game. Remember, this is a player that was the 2019 Pac-12 Freshman of the Year when she was at Cal. Had the 10th most wins at Cal by a player. Spent three seasons there. Service error for Florida State. Marlene Monterey has been experimenting with a topspin serve. Steinmetzger really encouraging her to use that. We saw it pay off yesterday for her. Nobody on. Same for Monterey. You hear the nobody call in transition, but that play was set up with a tough top spin serve and then a down the middle kill by Monterey. UCLA needs two points to take the opening set at the fours. Time it goes Polo's way. <laughs> Riley Powers, she did rip it. Set point UCLA. You heard somebody scream yeah. rip it, and <laughs> Riley Powers wants to rip it after a dig. What a great read getting this line shot, and number four in white crushes it where nobody is for UCLA. Timeout with it being set point at the fours for UCLA. We bring in the twos where it's been close, just like it has here at the fours. 19 all on the right side of your screen. Whitmarsh and Newberry with the serve. Service error, set point for the state. Jaden Whitmarsh is capable of being more aggressive from the service line. That time she stayed on the ground, was a little tentative, and made an error. I'd rather see an aggressive error. Now this Florida State pair, too, they're, they've been tough. They've only dropped one set in this tournament. They're 5-0. and oh. This is Elena Chacon serving for the set. UCLA has set point at the fours. Fitzpatrick on the swing. Newberry keeps it alive at the twos. We look over on the right side of your screen. It's set point UCLA. FSU staying alive at the fours. Still set point UCLA at the fours. You have to win by two, and it's tied at the twos on the left side of your screen. Want to focus in on the right side of your screen at the fours because this is for the set. UCLA Powers and Monterey get the opening set at the fours. So at the fours, Monterey. And Powers take the set here at the twos at the second set point for Florida State. Madison Fitzpatrick, nobody on, it's long. It's championship Sunday, would you expect anything less? Nothing less. Battles on both courts. Wow, going to extra points at the twos. Stein Metzger talking strategy with Devin Newberry and Jane Whitmarsh. 
Love his attention to detail. Steinmetzger looking for all those little advantages. Florida State has had two set points here at the twos. Chacon attacking the pulling blocker. Madison Fitzpatrick just relentless. Two great defensive touches by UCLA, but they couldn't control it on their side of the net. And Madison Fitzpatrick gets an opportunity with open net. Third set point for Chacon and Fitzpatrick. Kidding me, Jaden Whitmarsh, undersized attacker, but she gets up and punishes that ball. Good save, Devin Newberry. That was a great play. And then she will finish it. This will be the first set point UCLA. And that's one of the tools that Devin Newberry has added to her game. Great pull off the net, gets her platform. Look at the control. Perfect dig, and that is not easy to do. It's in! Madison Fitzpatrick ties it up. Both Bruins complaining about that handset from Elena Chacon. Little too much spin on that ball, but a no call there, and Florida State gets the point. Whitmarsh. Yes, it is in. Second set point UCLA. Stein Metzger talks about the importance of the first contact when Jaden Whitmarsh passes the ball well, she sides out at such a high clip. Four of the six sets for this duo decided by exactly two points. Newberry is just on it right now. UCLA fights up three set points by FSU. This is just the second time this Florida State pair has dropped a set. And it came down to two pull digs by Devin Newberry to finish this for UCLA. UCLA takes the opening set at the fours and the twos in our semifinal. We want to take you back because Devin Newberry had some incredible pulls off the net. She started at the net as the blocker retreated and was able to get her feet deep enough to dig this ball with her platform. That is such a quick move. And with control, it is so hard to do one of the toughest skills to teach on the beach. And that was a game changer for UCLA. Florida State had three set points, and Devin Newberry's play at the twos helped them come back and win the opening set 25 to 23. Two courts in action right now. You can see them both streaming on the ESPN app. This is our semifinal duel. The winner of this duel goes to the championship. You have to win on three courts in order to win the duel. Great bump set by Devin Newberry. Jane Whitmarsh is moving her hand contact around, taking it wide, using the entire court, and that puts pressure on Florida State, but she needs to pass up tighter to the net to continue to side out at a high percentage. The hustle play right there by Jaden Whitmarsh and then Devin Newberry to get it over the net. Just long. Look, and if you are Florida State, you can expect a battle back from Elena Chacon and Madison Fitzpatrick. They just dropped only their second set of this tournament. They're the first pair ever to win five matches at this tournament. 
They have been so tough, but that swing long for Madison Fitzpatrick. Well, the scouting report says that Jane Whitmarsh likes that little short pokey drop and Madison Fitzpatrick all over it, but can't score. Jane Whitmarsh's progress has been incredible too. Stein Metzger two years ago asked her to overhaul her offense. She came in just a banger wanting to slam balls. Maybe you can do that in juniors, but you gotta take your game up to the next level here in the college game. She's added all the shots, all the tools, but we've seen her today bang some balls. You need that power game too. Just a nice balance and she's got it now. Oh, tough shot. Devin Newberry. One of the strengths of this UCLA pair is Devin Newberry's offense. So her retreating off the net or putting herself in opportunities in positions to kill this ball. Look at that hit. Just a sharp down. Good arm speed as well. That drops in, another good block for Devin Newberry. And you, if you've been watching her, you've seen how good her all-around game is. She's done so many different things. She certainly has. She's been the difference. Look at this great block move in the angle. Left hand shuts down the angle attack of Florida State. Elena Chacon getting on top of that ball, hammering it at Devin Newberry so she good can't come up with it. Side switch, you switch every seven points. Nick Lucena talking to his pair and then Stein Metzger strategizing with the Bruins. Devin Newberry, you know, it is Mother's Day. She kind of has the mom role on the team. That's something that she had in high school too. So she's brought it to the college team. Wants everybody to have the best experience while they're here at UCLA. Yeah, and she was a standout player in high school at Marymount, which is actually just across the street from UCLA. A fantastic indoor player as well, but she's brought another level of leadership to this UCLA program. Just a slight lead, though, for Newberry and Whitmarsh. Chacon and Fitzpatrick not going anywhere. The first sets on both courts in action were so dramatic. Jaden Whitmarsh powers that down the line. Chacon was there and couldn't come up with it. Look at her turn this ball. Look at the power on that ball, the pace makes it hard to control. What do you think about her pass on that play? I liked it. Yeah, yeah. It's and really that's, good place. When you focus on that first contact, it really sets you up for success. That was going to be tough to cover. Elena Chacon did the same exact thing that Jaden Whitmarsh did to her, challenging her down that line. Both players had angle blocks in front of them. Elena Chacon, beautiful drop shot, starting with the dig. Slides into that angle, gets her feet there, and then drops it. That's perfect hand contact. You need to get that top spin in order to make that ball drop. And watch the spin on that ball. That ties it at six. Playing 21 again. Touch on the ball, point for UCLA. It did drop in. Jaden Whitmarsh staying more aggressive, and I like that. I'm sure Stein Metzger told her, hey, look, you can be way more aggressive offensively, and it's paying off for them. And Stein working at this court at the twos. <laughs> Through the block, Elena Chacon tied up again. So they will switch sides. We bring in the fours, right side of your screen, where Morgan Chacon and Jordan Polo have a one-point lead. Christine, down on this court, what's been going on at the fours? Yeah, a huge part of FSU staying in this one, honestly, has been UCLA's errors. They have four hitting errors in this set already. And if you look at the score, obviously, it's super close, but four hitting errors is a lot. What a dig by Riley Powers. Her reads 
on the game are so impressive. Chases that ball down. Look at that one arm fully lays it out. And then she gets up and is able to put this ball away with nobody up deep middle. So impressive by Riley Powers. And we'll see if that can kind of right the ship from what Christine told us. A few errors have sneaked in for the Bruins. Good recycle of the ball. You cover it off the block and get a second chance. Morgan Chacon chips to the open sand. Florida State has to win this set to push the match to a third. That was really tight to the net. It doesn't matter, UCLA cleans it up. But credit Riley Powers out of the net, patient, gets under the ball, scoops it, so her partner's able to side out. That is a point scoring save. trying to get aggressive on that serve, but a service error. Right idea. I mean, these two pairs are really close. You want to open things up with that aggressive serve. Back-to-back -back service errors, they trade points. Morgan Chacon. Too early on the drop by Marley Montserrat. Morgan Chacon's an indoor player. She loves to get up and bang. You can't give her open net too early because she gets up and just crushes that ball down the line. So they hit the technical timeout at the fours. We swing to the twos. And UCLA now down by a point after winning the opening set. was able to get that poke shot up from Fitzpatrick. Middle, middle. Oh! Long shot attacking error by Fitzpatrick. UCLA putting more pressure on Florida State right now with defensive touches staying in the rally longer. There's a good attack from Madison Fitzpatrick, and she puts Florida State up by a point. They hit the technical timeout at the twos. We step aside. Could be a photo finish at the twos and the fours. It's close here on the sand. the best day on the beach of the year. The NCAA home for all 90 championships. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Today at 4 Eastern here on ESPN2, we will crown a beach volleyball national champion. USC will make its fifth appearance in the championship duel. They're already there after a win over UCLA in the winner's portion of the bracket. They will face either UCLA again or Florida State in that championship duel coming up at 4 Eastern. This has been so much fun already, Holly McPeak. Both of these courts have been really close. I love it. I love the intensity. I love the high level of volleyball. And then the game within the game, the strategy and the adjustments each team is making. We are playing in flights. So the twos and fours, the only pairs in action right now, ones, threes, and fives will play after we finish on these two courts. And both of these programs have played for a national title before. UCLA has two titles. Florida State has been the runner up twice. No titles yet to the Seminoles' name. An attacking error by Jordan Polo. 
Yeah, these are the three teams. Look, we've only had four teams all time make it to the NCAA championship final and only two champions, USC and UCLA. These are the top three programs in the country in terms of consistently getting to this position to try and win a championship. Now, the only other team to play in the final in the NCAA era has been Pepperdine. Riley Powers did everything she could to try to control that, but just too much heat coming from the FSU side. Morgan Chacon loves to hit the ball. It pays off. Good aggressive offense. Monterey, get it. Love the aggressive approach by Marley Monterey. The call was right, but she just takes the open sand. That's an aggressive approach. Good court vision by Marley Monterey of UCLA. She's doing the slow walk with Jenny Johnson Jordan, the associate head coach of UCLA. Really the glue and the backbone of this UCLA beach volleyball program. She's an Olympian. She's a great role model, and these athletes look up to her so much. Yeah, Stein Metzger has said numerous times how crucial Jenny Johnson Jordan is to the success of UCLA volleyball. He says that, yeah, he would lose his job or quit if he couldn't coach with her. <laughs> hey, and Christine's gonna talk to Jenny Johnson Jordan once this flight is finished. So in between flights, we will hear from her. Riley Powers touching so many balls defensively. That one she can't control. Florida State one point advantage in the second set. Well, Florida State has to win this set at both pairs. They drop the opening set to UCLA at the twos and the fours. We're here at the fours. Monterey, yeah, great decision down the line, open sand. And Riley Powers is giving Marley Monterey a great call. Very definitive, very loud. And that helps Marley Monterey side out, especially when she's getting all the serves. This four pair for UCLA have struggled a bit. They've lost four straight matches. A new pair, too. They're just 10 and four on the season, and they've played a lot of their time at the fives. Oh, smoked it, Morgan Chacon. Morgan Chacon loves to hit the ball. She's gonna get up and bang, and if you're Riley Powers, maybe get that platform down and get under it. She's trying to dig it overhand, but Morgan Chacon hits with a lot of range and is able to get on top of that ball. Good cover by Polo. Ooh, tricky. You hear the scream, no one, and Riley Powers helping her partner out. Marley Monterey responds. A little back bump, but Marley Monterey ready. Turn looking call by Riley Powers and the pound by Marley Monterey. Yeah, this duo struggled with a few errors earlier in this set. They look like they're cleaning it up here. Well, I think they're trying to stay aggressive, and sometimes that leads to errors, so you just gotta dial it back. <laughs> Yeah, you got it, you got it. Come on. Come on. Off of the block goes Riley Powers. That set from Morgan Chacon to Jordan Poli Polo came off the net, and that allowed UCLA to scoot up into the court to dig that ball. Talking about starting aggressive, you would rather them start aggressive, right? Than yeah. have to build it up? Yeah, I think once it gets later in a match, you get more tight, and it's hard to dial it up then. But start aggressive, try and establish a lead and a mindset. Monterey, great pull, great hustle, bump back over to FSU. Here comes Morgan Chacon. So on a free ball opportunity, why not go to Jordan Polo and make Morgan Chacon set instead of hit? You don't want to go to the strongest hitter on the other side of the net. At least in my opinion, I don't think that's the right move. 
Brooke Niles was fine with it. She yeah. liked it a lot. <laughs> Ties at 17, going to 21. Have to win by two. Good defense right there by Florida State, turning it into a point. Trying to force Marley Monterey to attack that line and they're all over it. Side switch with Florida State leading by one. A win for Florida State would push this match to a third set. By the way, over at the twos, they're tied up at 14 all in the second set. UCLA took the first set. Marley Montre has been getting most of the serves, but that time going to Riley Powers. Good cross court kill. When you decide to serve at someone, wh what are you going after? Like, why one person over the other? Uh, maybe they have offensive weaknesses or tendencies that are easier for you to defend, or it plays into the strength of your defense. A lot of times when you've got a big hitter and a big blocker, it's a nice matchup, but Morgan Chacon has been tough to slow down until then. That time she tries a shot and Marley Monterey blocks it. This UCLA pair needs two points for their first win at NCAAs. That serve is long cross court by Riley Powers. Florida State's going to have to hustle. They do. Wow. Back corner drops in. Riley Powers had a chance to score at the net, but Elena Chacon, excuse me, Morgan, Morgan Chacon. Chacon. It's a lot of Chacons out here. Makes a play at the net, a block touch, and is able to attack it back into the backcourt. It is set point Florida State to send it to a third set. And they take a timeout. We'll check in on the twos here. It's close there. Devin Newberry, Jaden Whitmarsh leading by one. This is Newberry on the serve. And it's out. Yesterday, Morgan Chacon was serving and running to the net to block, but today, Madison Fitzpatrick is splitting those duties. Serve raises the tape. Newberry sets up her partner, Whitmarsh, and attacking error, point for to State. Look, we've seen Devin Newberry, number 13 in white for UCLA. Her all-around game, it's been so much fun to watch today, and she has really willed UCLA in this match. She made two great defensive plays at the end of the first set. Offensively, she is incredibly dangerous, and as a blocker, she's got natural talent, good press at the net. She's been a huge factor for the UCLA Bruins today. Yeah, Devin Newberry was critical. Was critical in that first set win, 25-23. Still up, still in play. Devin Newberry, goodness gracious! What a cover play to stay in it, and oh my gosh, she's able to score. Her partner hits. She chases one arm stab. Jane Whitmarsh out of the net. Great set. And then Newberry again for UCLA. There's some energy at the twos for UCLA. Tied at 18. 
Fitzpatrick. Advantage Florida State. Right side of your screen is where your focus should be. Chacon and Polo have set point. Dug up by Jordan Polo. Can't get back to it, we're tied at 20. Almost for Florida State. Polo touching that ball, just can't control it. Florida State still alive at the twos, left side of your screen. Jane Whitmarsh trying to rip it, but it's long and it is set point Florida State. Love the aggressive mindset, just long. That was a little off the net. But Florida State just playing some gritty defense to stay in it at the twos. So the fours are tied up at 20. You have to win by two. Monterey is getting set to serve here. UCLA takes the advantage and they will have match point at the fours. We transition to the left side of your screen. The twos have set point for Florida State. It's long, still set point Florida State, but match point right side of your screen at the fours. Off of the block, Florida State stays alive. Morgan Chacon is better when she's aggressive, attacking that ball. She's made a couple errors, and UCLA has been able to score when she slows it down and shoots. Left side of your screen, set point Florida State. And Florida State takes the second set to force a third set at the twos. Chacon and Fitzpatrick battle back after dropping just their second set of the tournament. But things getting heated here at the fours. Polo, Powers lays out for it. Second match point, UCLA. Great defense by Florida State. Riley Powers almost able to dig it back. Good effort there. Oh, excuse me, yes, set point for Florida State. UCLA ties it up at 22. Again, Marley Monterey, when she's aggressive, that one had enough pace on it that Florida State couldn't control it. It'll be Riley Powers' turn to serve, tied up at 22. Marley Monterey gonna block line on both players. Morgan Chacon, set point, yeah. Florida State. Marley Monterey needs to be a little more to the right, taking that line attack away from Morgan Chacon. That is the goal of a line blocker. You cannot hit the ball outside of her like that. Monterey goes after the pulling blocker. Riley Powers is intense. You hear that no one call, and Marley Monterey responds for UCLA. See what Marley can do. She's got a tough serve, as we've already seen today. Short shot by Morgan Chacon. The chess game continues. Threading the needle on the cut shot. Riley Powers almost gets there for UCLA and it is a back and forth battle. will do it. 
out. That's what you want, right? A semifinal, extra drama, a third set at both the twos and the fours. And it was the Bruins that struck first, winning those first set, but Florida State response, and it wasn't easy. Uh, so the twos already up playing in set number three after Elena Chacon and Madison Fitzpatrick had to come back to win 21 to 19 in the second set. Third set is different. We played a 15. They'll switch sides every five points. Service error, UCLA. Now, this is an interesting matchup. Newberry and Whitmarsh defeated this duo of Chacon and Fitzpatrick in a third set in their last meeting back on April 15th. Big block from Chacon. Devin Newberry, Polk. Jane Whitmarsh is passing the ball extremely well, setting up her offense, but on the cover play, Devin Newberry gets an opportunity. And for this UCLA pair, anytime Devin Newberry gets an opportunity, it's a for sure kill. Yeah, she has been so good today. How do you like that from Elena Chacon? Too much heat, Elena Chacon, number 15 right there. Just so explosive out of the sand. Starts with the great contact and the power. Jane Whitmarsh right there and can't control it. Elena Chacon, just a veteran beach player. So much beach experience. She's kind of focused more on the beach side, whereas her sister Morgan Chacon has split her time, played a lot of indoor for Florida State. right in the middle of the sand for Jaden Whitmarsh. Florida State mixing up their defense, that time pulling off the net. Jaden Whitmarsh splits them down the middle. Fitzpatrick drops into the angle. Well placed by Whitmarsh. This pair of Whitmarsh and Newberry, they have been the decider in two duels in this tournament this week. Oh! Sneaky! I feel like we can do a Devin Newberry highlight reel today. Oh, yes. I mean, unbelievable what she's doing. Playing her best game when they need it most here in the semifinals. That's a good shot from Madison Fitzpatrick. Right down the middle, open net, good aggressive swing. Elena Chacon, when we asked about her partner, said, you know, Madison just has a great will to win. And that's important when the game is on the line. There's Fitzpatrick laying out for it. Good call, Madison Fitzpatrick tells her partner, I'm going behind. Lots of movement, both defensively and offensively. Free ball, Madison Fitzpatrick goes back set, trying to move the blocker on the other side of the net and get Devin Newberry out of position. The fours are in action now in their third set. That match streaming live on the ESPN app. We're gonna keep you up to date as on both of these courts here. And Jaden Whitmarsh is gonna respond. Nice elevation, Stein Metzger, giving his pair a high five. Sean Fallowfield, volunteer assistant coach, chatting with the pair as well. This is an opportunity to have coaches on both courts. Stein Metzger telling them who they want to serve. I heard him say Elena Chacon. Mm -hmm. 20 NCAA tournament wins for Stein Metzger more than anyone else. He's got two national championships on the beach, too. Elena Chacon goes off the block. Man, this has just been one point here, one point there, back and forth. In such a high level of volleyball, I'm so impressed. Long 
from Whitmarsh, and we've seen her bring the heat several times today and place that ball in. I love that aggressive swing, literally inches long, but she's staying aggressive, which is key for her, that aggressive mindset. We are playing to just 15 points here in set number three. You see the blocking signals from Madison Fitzpatrick. And now Elena Chacon is going to run to the net. That's what they did a lot yesterday, and they were very successful. She's going to jump in angle and set Jaden Whitmarsh up for that line. Jaden Whitmarsh attacks the line but drops faster than Madison Fitzpatrick expected. Looks like a angle in a one on Madison Fitzpatrick. That means she'll block line. And Fitzpatrick does go line and gets a piece of Devin Newberry's block. And that's what you want to do. Your defender is in the angle if the blocker is taking line. So she has to hit that perfectly over the line block to drop. Quick communication here for these two, which are just a pure chemistry team. They're best friends, they're roommates, they're partners on the beach. And that communication, I mean, it can be a difference maker. Oh, it is. And in, in the maturity of these players, you see them in the middle of the match, little strategy session. Hey, this is a crucial game. I mean, you need to talk strategy. You need to figure out ways to score on this UCLA pair. Whitmarsh for Florida State. And Chacon, Chacon pulls as Whitmarsh goes into the angle. Side switch for the twos will bring back in the fours just as close at the fours. Morgan Chacon, Jordan Polo forced a third set with a 25 to 23 win in set two. Every single one of these sets has been so close. At the four pairs, Jordan Polo down the middle for the kill. And at the twos, left side of your screen, here comes Jaden Whitmarsh. Out. Jaden Whitmarsh, fantastic dig. And again, going for that deep middle ball. I, I swear it's an inch every time, just long. She needs to get on top of that ball with her hand just a little bit more with some top spin, and it will stay in the court. Marley Montserrat with a tricky shot at the fours to bring them within one. Left side of your screen at the twos, it will be Florida State serving. Alin Chacon back there. Knowles with a two-point advantage. Ace! Oh, I thought it was in. They're calling oh. a foot fault on Elena Chacon on her jump serve. UCLA was complaining about that earlier, but Nick Lucena says no, she did not foot fault the assistant coach for Florida State. So instead of an ace, it's a point for UCLA at the twos. They're switching sides at the fours on the right side of your screen, tied at five. That one is in for Jane Whitmarsh. Did you hear the talk by Devin yes. Newberry? Stay on top of it. That's what I talked about, that hand contact on top of the ball to keep it in. What a great partner. So the twos call timeout, tied at nine. We're tied at five. Not for long, though. UCLA up six to five at the fours. Feel like these teams could step up their serving pressure. They're going at one player, but it's not that tough of a serve. Why not put a little bit more pace on it and, and serve into space, create some movement? And we don't have a ton of wins, so can you be a little more aggressive on both sides? I think that? so, yeah. You just want to open it up. I mean, it's a back and forth battle, and they're just kind of 
scoring points on their side out. So a little more pace, a little bit more movement, and I think they can afford to be more aggressive. This will be Jordan Polo's serve. Going to 15 here in set number three. shot from Jordan Polo. Florida State has been setting Marley Monterey up for that line shot and they're leaning that direction so Marley Monterey needs to go the other way in serve receive after she passes the ball. They serve Monterey's way. Nobody on. <laughs> nice transition hand set by Marley Monterey and Riley Powers goes deep line. I'd love to see some service pressure right here. UCLA on the better side. You see the banners blowing into her or towards her. So she's got the wind in her face. That allows her to be a little bit more aggressive. She's still serving that top spin ball. from Morgan Chacon's arms a little funny. UCLA up by a point. And that's a real point, one where you serve, you play de defense, and you turn it into a point. Two's on the right side of your screen. UCLA has tied it at 10. Jaden Whitmarsh, I love it. Good poke shot over the angle block. This has been an extremely high level volleyball match at both pairs, but really at the twos. I mean, Devin Newberry and Jaden Whitmarsh have challenged to Conan Fitzpatrick, the only team who have won five matches this week. Yeah, it's been a nice chess match. I mean, they're both changing strategies, mixing up defense, and that's why it's been so close. Morgan Chacon takes a big cut at the fours, tied at eight. And a point for Florida State at the twos. You cannot be tentative with your serve and miss. It's got to be an aggressive attempt. Aggressive attempts, we see him clip the tape and drop. But if you're going to stand and serve tentative, you cannot miss. You want to pay attention to the two pair on the right side of your screen as they are getting close to that 15 point mark. Only playing to 15 in this third set. Oh, block. Elena Chacon, so explosive at five feet nine. She is blocking, taking a huge area at the net for Florida State. And they're gonna take a pause here at the twos with Florida State up needing three points to win the match. At the fours, it's Powers and Monterey up by one. Monterey pulls, and so Florida State goes short. Jordan Polo, so smart for Florida State. Saw a retreating blocker and drops it short in front of her. A lot of times when you pull off the net as a blocker, the weight is on your heel, so it's hard to get that short ball. Monterey takes advantage of the blocker pulling, and now UCLA needs five points for the win. Riley Powers talking every play. Marley Monterey new to this stage, new to this sport, and she's helping guide her partner along the way.
victory, setting that, falling to her knees, and it's perfect for Riley Powers. She is so intense, and she's talking to her partner every play about what they need to do to win this match. Jenny Johnson-Jordan trying to catch up with them, give them a little info, but Riley directing the cause out there. Uh, Holly, we've talked about how close this duel is. Total points in this duel, even at 109 apiece. Incredible. It is so back and forth. Long serve from Montserrat. But so close, aggressive mindset. Getting close at the twos as well, tied at 12. You have to win by two, going to 15. And it came from a tough serve. Someone stepping up at the service line. Tied at 11 at the fours. Side switch at the twos. UCLA two points away from the match at the twos. We're gonna focus right side of your screen. Still a tough serve for Florida State to handle. Elena Chacon in through that block. I don't know how she does that. It looks like Devin Newberry has her lined up. She gets her feet there and just explodes that ball off of her hand. Impressive by Elena Chacon of Florida State. The force call timeout, so here we go to the twos. You have to win by two. Whitmarsh giving everything she has. Pushed it too far. Match point, Florida State. Wow, great effort by Whitmarsh and UCLA, but now Florida State with the advantage. Look at the talk by Whitmarsh and Newberry. They have been here before. Madison Fitzpatrick trying to close this thing out. She's behind the service line. Not done. Jaden Whitmarsh is a gamer. Nice little redirect over the block right there. Good push up to the net by Newberry and then the redirect pokey cut shot. Pretty execution when the pressure is on. Madison Fitzpatrick rolls off the tape. Whitmarsh. Oh, Elena Chacon's block was big time. Devin Newberry just returned the favor on that tight ball. Just a little turn because Chacon was all over that ball defensively. Match point, Newberry and Whitmarsh. This is not edge of your seat moment. This is stand up moment. It's intense. <laughs> Elena Chacon looking, nobody on. Devin Newberry. A drama filled first point on the board for UCLA. What a win for this UCLA pair, beating the Florida State pair number twos that haven't lost yet. And it will be match point at the fours for Florida State. Morgan Chacon, Jordan Polo, this would even up the duel at one point apiece. You need three points to win.
Florida State with a slight wind advantage blowing in their face. Allows them to be a little bit more aggressive from the service line. We'll see if Morgan Chacon will take advantage of that. Monterey off the block. Second match point for Florida State coming up. Bruins staying alive. But right now, Florida State just needs a side out to win it. but it set up her defense. She makes a huge transition play for the Bruins. Great dig in the angle, and then Marley Monterey with a nice up and down transition set down the line chop by Riley Powers. Yeah, great placement by Riley Powers. Florida State has had, this will be their third match point coming up. All the drama for this. One of these teams will move on to the championship duel. We'll have that for you at 4 Eastern here on ESPN2. USC is already there. This is their fifth appearance in the championship duel. USC seeking a fourth NCAA title. But first, man, we've only played two courts, two out of the five in this semifinal. It's been intense. So intense, I'm exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> Look, how does this Florida State pair regroup here? This will be their third match point coming up. Well, I think strategically, Brooke Niles telling them where, where they want to serve and what they want to run. So that helps having a plan, and now they just have to execute. They've been keeping the ball all on Marley Monterey for the most part and forcing her to beat them by attacking in the angle. They've been taking her line mostly. On the other side, Jenny Johnson Jordan probably telling her pair what they are doing defensively against her and what they can look for. Can Powers and Monterey continue the run or will Chacon and Polo close this thing out? UCLA does lead the duel one nothing after getting a point at the fours. Excuse me, a point at the twos. Jordan Polo. Monterey with a nice hands. We're tied at 14. Wow, Marley Monterey, huge block touch at the net. Look at this little touch, and then giving them a free ball. Riley Powers, good slice into the angle. Look at the fire from her. It was 14 to 11, Florida State. Monterey pulls again with Polo attacking. Morgan Chacon. Really tight. Fourth match point, Florida State. And UCLA had a chance to score that, but the overset plays into Florida State's favor. So they confirm the server as Jordan Polo. Florida State has had all kinds of opportunities to close this out. This will be their fourth match point. but Florida State finishes it off. Jordan Polo, the little short poke over the line. 
Wow. What a match. Great set by Morgan Chacon. A little inside for the lefty and a redirect over that line block. Pays off for Florida State. Wow, what a way to start the semifinal duel. If that is any indication of what's to come in our second flight, you better buckle up. An even duel, UCLA getting the point at the twos, and then Florida State earning the point at the fours. Let's go down to Christine, who's standing by with Jenny Johnson Jordan. Yeah, Coach, that was a tough loss for your fours. Obviously, they played really well. What did you see out there from them? Well, they just showed a lot of fight. I mean, they were down, I don't know how many game points, and they just had this never-die mentality, and I'm really proud of them for the way they fought at the end. Outside of winning two more matches, what does your squad have to do moving forward in this one? Um, just really focus on our own court. I mean, you can't get caught up on what's happening everywhere, everywhere else. It's really easy to do that in this format for sure. So stay focused on our court, worry about your game, and the rest will take care of itself. How much would another championship mean for this program? Oh, well, it would mean a, a lot. <laughs> I mean, that's why we're here, we're here to play for this. We talked to our team this morning. We're like, this is why we're here, to play on Sunday. And so they're fired up, ready to go, and hopefully we can get two of the next three. Well, good luck. Thank you. Wow, what a way to start. The duel is even at one point apiece. You need three points to win. And the ones, threes, and fives will take to the sand when we come back to Gulf Shores here in the semifinal. Semi-final between Florida State and UCLA. It's time for the ones, threes, and fives to take to the sand. The duel is tied at one apiece. The first to three points wins and will sound that horn and send one team to the championship duel. We're going to start at the ones. Maddie Anderson and Brooke Bauer of Florida State taking on Lexi Dinneberg and Abby Van Winkle of UCLA. Lexi Denenberg, first serve, and it starts with a service error. Well, an important part of the game for Lexi Denenberg of UCLA is to come out aggressive with her serve. We saw her serve three aces in a row just yesterday. Yeah, she really put the power, turned the power up on that serve. Lexi Denenberg, a lot of experience playing at this ones pair. She was there last season in this tournament with Savvy Simo. And now her partner, Abby Van Winkle. And she has transitioned to the defender. Here she comes. Powerful poke. Love that deep poke to the cross court corner. Defender was charging into the angle, and that point scores for UCLA. Yeah, if you were with us in between flights, that's what we were talking about that poke shot that you just saw from Lexi Denneberg. You see the calls Lexi Denneberg has a three call that means jumping into the line and a one block for the right sider Brooke Bauer oh a second service error for this UCLA pair well you know that's the goal right aggressive serves to start this match both of them came out two errors unfortunately but trying to set the tone Maddie Anderson's turn, her and her partner, Brooke Bauer, 28 and 11 on the season. As you said, Holly, they faced this UCLA ones pair one time, and it was Florida State getting the win. Abby Van Winkle, the 6-2 right sider, so rangy at the net. She gets most of the serves, though. Two service errors now. Three as a pair for UCLA. That's too many to start the match. At one point, do you decide to dial it back? Now? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got to get some momentum on your side of the net by keeping the ball in the court. Van Winkle. Or Bauer cuts it. Van Winkle down the line. There's the high contact point by Abby Van Winkle. Instead of trying to hit it straight down, she uses the whole court going deep. Look at her work for her approach. Great footwork by UCLA's Abby Van Winkle. Now this is the first time that Abby Van Winkle has been playing at the ones in her junior season. She's been there with Lexi Dinneberg. They're 26 and nine on the season. Great hustle, but point Florida State. 
Love the effort. Dendenberg able to touch it, just could not control it in the direction of Van Winkle. It'll change sides every seven points. We are playing to 21. You have to win by two. But talking about this UCLA pair, I mean, Lexi Dinnenberg has very high standards. She expects to be great in all aspects, whether it's at practice, in a drill, in a match. And so that's something that Abby Van Winkle has adjusted to, and it's helped their partnership. Well, I think Abby Van Winkle has high aspirations oh, yeah. to be a high-level pro as well. But playing with De Lexi Dinnenberg, there's, you know, a lot of pressure. But because you want to be your best. Yeah, and one of those areas that Abby Van Winkle has been working on is her setting. It was her probably her weakest skill last year, that hand setting and bettering the ball in transition. You've got to have that when you're at the ones. And there's a hand set. That one does go far over the net, though. That's a break for Florida State. Maddie Anderson, Brooke Bauer, 10 wins against top 10 opponents this season. And there's the service pressure. That's something Brooke Niles talked about this morning, that she wanted to see service pressure because you have to separate yourself from a team like Van Winkle and Denenberg with some pressure from the service line. Florida State has also benefited from three service errors by UCLA. What a layout by Maddie Anderson. And she finished it. Right now, Florida State just rolling. They're playing their kind of volleyball. Great dig by Brooke Bauer, the one arm stab. Actually, that was Maddie Anderson on the dig. They wear their hair the same when they play, and they look exactly the same <laughs> from behind. That one just missed wide for Anderson. But a good run there for the Florida State duo at the ones. Duel is tied up at one apiece, so the first school to win on two of these courts will advance to the championship duel to face USC. And this time, Maddie Anderson bringing the power, just a redshirt sophomore out of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Florida State setting the tone. Aggressive from the service line, making defensive touches. I like the strategy they're using. Quick shot by UCLA. Even though that ball dropped, Florida State was able to touch it. So if you're UCLA, you want to find open sand and take Florida State out of the play defensively. See the four block on the right side? That means jumping into the angle and the one block on the left side. Brooke Bauer with a tricky shot, and that falls down. It makes it a nine to five advantage for Florida State at the ones. Checking in at the fives for the first time today, Caitlin Moon, Raylan White taking on the two freshmen for UCLA, Natalie Miskowski and Sophie Moore. Sean Fallowfield walking with those two freshmen, Natalie Miskowski, number nine, Sophie Moore, number eight. And this is a fives pair for Florida State who've really come on strong. I talked to Brooke Niles about that this morning. She said, look, our fives are finally playing well and we're really excited about it. We feel like we match up well there. Now this group, Miskowski and Moore, they are 1-0 and against, well, excuse me, that was against USC, but these two have not played because UCLA had a different pair. So Moon and White, first time they're facing this duo of Miskowski and Moore. Miskowski just long on that line shot, trying to find open sand. Look, Moon and White had a really big, the last time they were out on the sand, it came down to their court. They kept Florida State's season alive with a win over LMU. And not only they got the win, that was their first win this week in Gulf Shores. Natalie Miskowski will serve and run to the net. Her grandparents here are, drove 
from Pocahontas, Ohio, to see her play live. To the back corner, Natalie Miskowski. Good retreat play, Natalie Miskowski digs it. There's the poke, coffin corner for the UCLA point. Where have you seen this young team for UCLA grow the most? Well, I think just maturity, and obviously this is the first time they've been on a stage this big. Yeah, both true freshmen. And that's a tough shot for Miskowski, but they both had a lot of beach training before they got to UCLA. They certainly did. Played at a high level at the juniors. I believe Sophie Moore played for Wave Beach Volleyball Club in San Diego. And Natalie Miskowski out of Maricosta High School in Manhattan Beach, kind of a hotbed for beach volleyball. And White just got her arm up there and whipped it. She certainly did. Aggressive, high-level volleyball IQ by Raylan White. She had a very strong freshman season for Florida State, getting in the lineups at the NCAA tournament last year. And that high volleyball IQ, she has been around the game for a very long time. Her dad is the coach at St. Pete Community College, grew up around the game. Working on the score right now on this court. We'll get you an update as soon as we have that confirmed. Love the fire. Caitlin Moon, Raylan White. Good transition play right there. Are these two really close friends on the Florida State side of the net. They just have a different level of trust because of that friendship. Named to the CCSA All-Tournament team. That's long, point for Florida State. Again, still working to confirm the score on this court. We'll work on updating that and then get you back to the ones where Anderson and Bauer trying to pull away here. They're up 12 to seven over Denneberg and Van Winkle. Oh, and a communication error gives an ace to Abby Van Winkle. And that's one of the things about serving to space or middle, because there's a communication. You have to communicate there, and there it breaks down for Florida State. That was better, and they'll benefit from that point, thanks to the swing by Brooke Bauer. Brooke Bauer that time finding middle in transition with two down. So technical timeout at the ones. Anderson and Bauer leading 13 to eight. Coming up later today at four Eastern, we will have our championship duel here at the NCAA Beach Volleyball Championship. Courtney Lyle, Holly McPeak, Christine Williamson with you for this semifinal. The duel is tied at a point apiece. You need three points to win. We are checking in on the threes now for the first time. Leah Monkhouse, Jesse Smith taking on Anna Long and Kate Privet. Smith on the shot, and it's a 15 to 12 lead, UCLA. Jesse Smith, according to Stein Metzger, is the ball magnet. She just happens to be in the right place at the right time, and the ball finds her. That's a good thing to have. Monkhouse off the tape, saved by Anna Long. Poke shot and a long. Really nice transition right there. Starts with a drop, one arm stab, and then actually it was a two arm stab. But well done, Kate Privet pushes her pass up to the net, pokey down the line. Yeah, going back to Wednesday, our first day of the tournament, it was single elimination. It came down to this court for Florida State and a long and Kate Privet had to win against Cal Poly in three sets, or it would have been an early exit for Florida State, who's the five seed in this tournament. Yeah. 
Here comes Jesse Smith. Nobody on a perfect lane for Kate Privet. Kate Privet was not in the lineup last year for Florida State and is just such an intense competitor. Great defender in the backcourt, and she and Long really complement one another. Yeah, she was an alternate for this tournament last year. Put up a really good regular season record, 30 and five at the fives with Jenna Johnson, but slid to the alternate role for NCAAs. Nice angle, Jesse Smith. One of three true freshmen in the lineup for UCLA. Which is so impressive. And then on this big stage, I mean, incredible. And she's got such a great volleyball IQ. As a junior, she was the tallest player, so they always put her at the net to block. But now she's playing some defense for UCLA. That was the 2020 AAU National Beach Player of the Year, also the California Gatorade Player of the Year. Has a twin, too. Caitlin plays indoor at USC. She does, Crosstown Rivals. Jesse Smith tooling the block to give UCLA a two-point lead. Florida State trying to keep the pressure on freshman Jesse Smith, but she's responding. Smith pulling. Point Florida State. Anna Long saves the point with a transition block. This is a pretty good point scoring opportunity for UCLA, but Long steals it from her. Florida State is trying to get back to the championship duel. It would be their third final appearance for the first since 2018 when they lost to UCLA in that championship. Monkhouse, oh, just sent it wide. Liam Monkhouse trying to end that rally by being aggressive, turning it down that line. But the hustle to keep the ball alive by Florida State. Liam Monkhouse opportunity here. You see that hand contact on the ball, just taking it a little bit wide for UCLA. We bring in the ones now as Anderson and Bauer, two points away from taking the opening set. Monkhouse and Smith at the threes move ahead 18-17. You do have to win by two. Eyes on the right side of your screen. Van Winkle serves. Lexi Denneberg takes some pace off of it. Lexi Denneberg from Florida, as well as Maddie Anderson on the other side of the net. These players very familiar with one another. Yeah, this pair, Denneberg and Van Winkle, had not dropped a set this week until they faced USC yesterday. In danger of doing so there, they take a timeout at the ones. Back to the threes we go. Monkhouse and Smith looking for two more points. Super tight, but Monkhouse handled it nicely. And it goes out. Jesse Smith digging a lot of balls, but UCLA unable to turn them into points. So we did get the score updated over at the fives. Moon and White up 19 to 13, serving. I'm with you, Cole. Zooming in on the fives now with the threes, taking a seat. Some cushion here for Moon and White. This is Natalie Miskowski for UCLA. And 
Sophie Moore sent right back to her. Now she'll go behind the set, but it's out. Set point, Florida State. Unfortunate air after the dig by Sophie Moore, just trying to go high line and missing that ball long. Have to execute in a match like this, especially after a dig. Miskowski trying to keep things going, she will. Second set point coming for Moon and White. Side change at the fives. One's getting close as well as Dinneberg and Van Winkle fight to extend this set. Point Florida State, set point at the ones. That was touched at the five, so Florida State takes this first set at the fives. Moon and White. They can do the same thing here at the ones. Maddie Anderson and Brooke Bauer with a big opportunity. It will be Anderson's serve. Florida State winning the serve and pass game. Serving more aggressive for sure. Threes have set point for UCLA. That was in. We play on attention on the left side of your screen at the ones. Abby Van Winkle, deep corner kill, staying alive. Still set point at the threes, right side of your screen for UCLA. Monkhouse sends it back, and UCLA wins at the threes. To the ones, Anderson. Florida State gets it at the ones, 21-16. That's a pretty comfortable win in the first set by Florida State, but I know UCLA will have a response. Dendeberg and Van Winkle, very aggressive. Yeah, we expect nothing less. It's been back and forth all duel long, sending one team to the championship. It's gonna be a great day. It already is here in Gulf Shores, Alabama, because we get to crown a champion. This is our semifinal duel. It's tied up at one point apiece. It takes three points to win the duel and advance to that championship duel against USC. And we've seen a lot of close battles and I'm not surprised with these two teams. No, we knew it was gonna be back and forth, but this tight was, I mean, so impressive in the first round, especially at the ones. I was impressed by how FSU came out to play. So here are the threes. Monkhouse and Smith took the first set 21 to 19. Anna Long and Kate Privet will need to battle back and win this set to force a third. And Anna Long into the net. Christine, what's been going on with UCLA on this court? Yeah, between sets, they really talked about defense being the focus for UCLA against Anna Long. They want to defend her on the right side of the court. They said she's trying to slow and catch us in a half pull, so we really need to commit. They also said to make sure when you go up to block, you're like, I'm going to block this ball. So going up with some confidence. Yeah, and with a purpose. You don't, you're not just taking up space. You're trying to touch that ball. Jesse Smith just sent that right over. And along attacking off of Monkhouse's block. That was an option ball, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I'd much prefer an overhand contact or a spike on the on two, especially after Leah Monkhouse had a good first contact. Service error by Kate Privet. Again, either one of these teams have got to win the matches on two courts in order to win this duel. Playing in flights, so the ones, threes, and fives in action right now. You can see all those courts streaming on the ESPN app. Come on, Kate Privet, yes! Really nice pace on that attack by Kate Privet. Crossing defensive pattern by UCLA. 
And Jesse Smith just late run into that spot. That drops in point for Florida Stinks. Different court. And we're back at the threes. Just keep you on your toes. Monkhouse, really nice setup too from Jesse Smith. Jesse Smith does a really nice job giving her partner an up and down set and telling her what's open. Retreat, off the tape, Leah Monkhouse waits on her approach. Hits that ball, angle. Ooh, that was really tight down the line. Back over, then the block of Jesse Smith since Florida State scrambling. Credit Leah Monkhouse with the aggressive serve. She's been working on her top spin serve all season. And that's a play over at the fives. We're at the threes right now. Yeah! Leah Monkhouse just misses that one wide, but they were able to score a point on the previous serve to Kate Privet. UCLA get that back over. <laughs> That's all it needed, an easy little roll shot from Anna Long. But great scramble at the net by UCLA. Both of them had to lay out to keep it alive. Little joust play at the net, Leah Monkhouse, one arm stab, and then Jesse Smith out of the backcourt to save it. A little cut shot by Long to finish it off for Florida State. Yeah, this Florida State pair, Long and Privet, they've played at the fives, they've played at the fours. Obviously now they're at the threes. Brooke Niles, I think she really wanted to try this pair. Saw them play a couple of scrimmages in the fall and felt like it would be a good fit. turns the ball magnet Jesse Smith number 11 in white just a freshman great reads to win that long rally for UCLA Jenny Johnson Jordan working with this pair for UCLA and we'll take a break at the threes I think everyone's tired after all those long rallies yeah and we've had long rallies on almost every court too high level volleyball at all five positions. This is tied at the fives. Go, go, go. Just go. Deep cross, deep cross, deep cross. Great, no one out. That's me. And one. Go. I'm with you right here. And that came off of Sophie Moore's hands a little funny. Point for Florida State. Good deep flat hit, catching the defender in an uncomfortable position. You want to overhand, dig that ball if it's got enough pace, but that was kind of a tweener. Wow, the turnaround for Caitlin Moon and Raylan White. And a little more success recently, of course, winning their last match over LMU, clinching the duel in the elimination bracket. And UCLA taking the angle, Sophie Moore. Took a couple swings, but Sophie Moore able to finish it off. She's such a dynamic attacker. It's only 5'9 from Encinitas, California, but she's explosive out of the sand, really quick feet. Yeah, her athleticism, one of her biggest strengths in the sand. The hustle from the teenagers paying off. Raylan White places it nicely. Raylan White sees Natalie Miskowski of UCLA pulling into that angle and just going a little bit deep as a retreating blocker. Here's the first dig and scramble by UCLA. 
here, Raylan White. Watch number nine in white. She pulls off and then deep. It's hard to get deep all the way cross court when you're a blocker. Moore sets up Miskowski. Right past Caitlin Moon, who is moving backwards. Similar play to what we just saw Natalie Miskowski do to Florida State, attacking at that retreating blocker in the angle. UCLA got their first point from the twos. Florida State got a point from the fours. And now both teams racing to get two more points on the board. They'll take a seat at the technical timeout, but back to the ones, there is an injury timeout here. Give you a view of what happened. That is Abby Van Winkle. Oh, and she comes and steps on the barrier between the court and the crowd. So they're taking a look at Abby Van Winkle right now. Not sure if they're checking ankle or toe. And you cannot substitute in the middle of a match. You would have to forfeit the match. So we'll keep an eye on them. They'll see if they can get Abby Van Winkle going. Back to the threes we go, where Monkhouse and Smith lead by a point. Point, Florida State. Kate Privet is everywhere defensively for Florida State, even after she gets blocked, staying in the play. How about in along with the defensive cover, one arm stab, and then the bump over kill by Privet. Now Kate Privet came in as a highly touted recruit. Brooke Niles said one of the best she's ever recruited, but she was not a player that came in and asked if she would start. Never asked Brooke that question. She just came in and went to work. I remember seeing her at the junior level just thinking she was amazing to watch. It just reminded me of a, like a, an Elena Chacon or someone really dynamic. Elena Chacon's a little bit bigger, but just someone who could dominate defensively. So back over on the ones, Abby Van Winkle is up. We are being told that her toe next to her big toe might have a cut in it from that pursuit of the volleyball when she stepped on the barrier, but she is up on the sand. She's a tough cookie. She's walking okay, which is really nice. And sometimes after a little injury like that, your focus becomes laser sharp. UCLA has got to be laser, laser sharp here after dropping the first set, and they're down by two here in the second set. Denenberg setting up Van Winkle. Through the block, Brooke Bauer. Defensively, Florida State has a nice beat on what UCLA is doing. UCLA might need to run some back sets, move them around, and try to open up their offensive options. Maddie Anderson just owning the net. Pass was a little bit tight, and Abby Van Winkle trying to get there in poke high, but Maddie Anderson aggressive with her hands. UCLA calling the timeout. Yeah, Anderson and Bauer have gone up by four at the ones. Flash over to the fives here. It's a one-point game in the second set. Oh, pretty shot down the line. Natalie Miskowski. Natalie Miskowski out of Hermosa Beach, California. Started beach volleyball in middle school. Really big in her community. Loves just having two players out on the sand. Really loves the strategy behind it.
Caitlin Moon setting up to serve. And there's a service error, ties it at 13. You know, we've got a lot of sisters um, on the same teams, but Caitlin Moon, her sister Courtney Moon, playing for FAU, and we got to see her in action this week. Yeah, I think they were the only pair of sisters from different schools here competing. And they used to drive two to three hours to train in Texas with a coach named Tim Wolliver because they were so committed and they fell in love with the sport together. Yeah, started entering tournaments together. Now, Courtney had to go back to school after FAU was eliminated, so no longer here, but you know she's cheering her sister on from home. Raylan White, nice dig in transition off the hands of the blocker, Miskowski. Dig in the heat, comes in hard and attacking that ball off the outside hand of the blocker for UCLA. It's definitely, you can tell there's been a change with Caitlin Moon and Raylan White. They struggled early in this tournament. They're one and two in this tournament, but you gotta believe that that last win where they clinched the duel for LMU gave them a lot of confidence. Definitely, I think they've been gaining confidence every duel since they lost. Brooke Niles told us this is one of the best service pressure pairs that she has out on the sand. And they both have a really good balance of energy. That was a short serve grazing the tape. Sophie Moore handles it. So explosive out of the sand, no blocker in front of her. Good kill for UCLA. Back and forth we go. Three courts in action right now. Went up there and cut it. Really nice angle attack. The ball was kind of blowing wide on her. And she gets it to go cross court. That's not an easy swing. And Caitlin Moon had to really hustle to get that ball too. Take it out from under the net. Where does Sophie Moore go? Right there. She is so dynamic, that time going line outside the blocker. Tough as the defender to get all the way over. You see Moon in the angle and nobody there in the line. Looks like they had a communication gap there. Both of them were in the angle. Sometimes you double it up, so sometimes that's a plan. Florida State. And that's all they need. They need to open it up and get aggressive. Caitlin Moon pushes that ball up and then Raylan White pushes her partner wide. Sophie Moore touches it. Natalie Miskowski needs to take off after this ball. Timeout at the fives with Florida State leading 17 to 15. A win for the Florida State pair would put them up two to one in the duel. While they take a seat, we'll go to the threes where Monkhouse and Smith lead another close set. Every single one of these sets has been close on every court today. Just the third time this season, these two programs are meeting UCLA won the first two meetings. Kill for Jesse Smith. The freshman getting tested, but she showed that she's got the tools to side out. Really nice court vision, digging tons of balls for this UCLA pair. Kate Privet, really fun to watch. She is tied for fourth in career wins at Florida State with 96, and I mean, you see why. She's putting an ice towel on her shoulders just to stay cool in this weather. 
Here's how the scores look. The twos and the fours have already finished their matches. They were the first to go playing in flights today. UCLA with the point at the twos. Florida State with the point at the fours. And now the other three courts in action. You talk about pressure though, Florida State is seeking its first championship dual appearance since 2018. It would be their third finals appearance. And for UCLA, this would actually be a fourth straight final appearance, their fourth overall. And along gets that ball to drop through the block of Jesse Smith. If UCLA were to advance, it would be their third straight USC-UCLA final. <laughs> Leah Monkhouse. Great set and call by Jesse Smith. Started with a right call and then changed it to left. Leah Monkhouse finds open sand. There's the communication there defensively. And this will be match point UCLA. Forces it through the block and along. Second match point coming for the Bruins. This ball goes tight. It looks like Liam Monkhouse might have the advantage there, but the long arm of Anna Long pays off. That's fitting. Very. UCLA gets the point thanks to a service error. UCLA now leading the semifinal duel two to one. Over to the fives, where it's close in favor of Florida State. Raylan White, too much on it. It sailed. When that's a point for UCLA. Yeah, when that sets off the net, the blocker is not going to say she's going to pull and become a defender. So you want to hit it deep, just have to keep it in the court. Miskowski and Moore have to win this set to force a third set at the fives. Well, just wide for Miskowski. Miskowski going for it down that line just too much. So now Florida State needs two points to win the match at the fives. Miskowski, yes. Beautiful set and call, high deep crossing ball. UCLA needs to do some work, score some real points with their defense. We'll take a timeout here. It's getting close, but Florida State up by a point, 19-18. Over to the ones. Lexi Dinenberg with a hand set to Abby Van Winkle. Attacking error by Florida State. Christine's been watching this court here at the ones. Yeah, things have been really tough defensively for UCLA. FSU has been really working Lexi all over the court back there, but Abby has been huge offensively to keep them in this one. They had a pretty intense hug and chat on the last switch. Obviously now a quick break, so we'll see what adjustments they make. Uh, Christine, any sign that Abby Van Winkle's foot, her toe injury is bothering her? No, not at all. She's seemingly perfectly fine. Awesome, that's good to hear. She stepped on a barrier and they had a medical timeout here at the one. So they take a seat with a close one point second set. This is how the bracket shapes up right now. USC, they are in the national championship duel. That will be approximately 4 Eastern on ESPN2, just trying to finish up this semifinal duel between UCLA and Florida State. Anything stick out so far, Holly? I mean, it's been so close. No, I mean, it's just such a battle on all these courts. The, the thing that seems to be the advantage or give an advantage to one team or another is a little bit more aggressive from the service line, and that's been the difference. 
So right now, UCLA leads the duel two to one. You need three points to win, but Florida State, they're two points away from evening up the duel if Moon and White can hold on here. And they've got a huge advantage on court one. Yeah, so if Moon and White win, it would come down to court one, but I think the teenagers might have something to say about that. We'll get to see Sophie Moore here. Caitlin Moon. Oh, she ripped it. And it is going to be match point at the fives for Florida State. Florida State won the first set, leading in the second set. Maddie Anderson rips a jump serve ace down the middle for Florida State. This started off a little shaky for the UCLA duo. They had three quick service errors to start this match. They had the right mindset, wanting to be aggressive, but it just, they could not execute what they wanted to do. Anderson and Bauer have not let that momentum go. And a service error. Christine, what's been going on with this UCLA team? Yeah, and that last break, Lexi took off her sunglasses. She looked at Abby and she said, every single day when we put in the work at practice, this is why we are not done. And that's what Stein Metzger said at the beginning of this tournament. The goal is to practice how they play. Yeah, a lot of times you hear coaches across all sports talk about how they want practice to be tougher than a match so they're ready for anything when it comes to game day. Maddie Anderson. I mean, but Florida State is playing so well right now. They are, and I don't think UCLA is putting enough pressure on them with their serve. These are two big physical players. Brooke Niles was a little tentative to put them together as a pair, but they have really nice chemistry, and when they're on, they are on. Lexi Dinnenberg working around the defense of Florida State. In the, in the fall, UCLA, Stein Metzger had this team read a book. It was called, It Takes What It Takes, Think Neutrally. They do lots of breathing. They need to be present in the moment. That's when this pays off. Well, Christine talked about it at the start of the duel. Stein Metzger also says, be in a yellow submarine, block everything else out, be by yourself down there. Happy <laughs> Van Winkle through the block. Good aggressive play, now just down by one in this must-win second set. UCLA is trying to make its fourth straight final appearance. It would be a third final appearance for Florida State, the first time since 2018. It all comes down to the ones. UCLA has also won the last eight meetings with this Florida State team. The streak started in that 2018 championship duel. Service error, Van Winkle. Continuing to try and go for it. Service error. Lexi Denneberg will have a chance from the line. UCLA needs a big defensive play right now. And we've seen how aggressive and how tough Lexi Denneberg's serves can be. Maddie Anderson blocked by Van Winkle. I would call that a big defensive play by Abby Van Winkle. Line block. Lexi Denneberg, she's dialed back her serve, just going with a jump floater. 
But Abby Van Winkle, nice press and point for the UCLA Bruins. Tied at 19, you have to win by two. Van Winkle. Set point UCLA. That is a break. Maddie Anderson was there. Her weight was just shifted the wrong way. And now set point UCLA trying to push it to a third. Anderson has tied it. All the athletes around this court screaming, supporting their teammates. You can hear them screaming. Big time kill over the angle block. Maddie Anderson, nice and deep. All eyes, all pressure at the once. This decides who goes to the national championship duel. Abby Van Winkle, second set point UCLA. Beautiful pass, great hand set by Denneberg in Abby Van Winkle. Watch her get her feet to this ball and on top of it, down that line, the fire, you can see it. Bruins want this. Both teams locking him here. Back and forth we go. Second set point, UCLA. The save by Brooke Bauer. She tries the poke shot. Fantastic cover play by Florida State. Abby Van Winkle got the block she wanted, but Florida State able to come up with it. Nice middle serve. Little bit out of system. Good angle block. And look at the cover by Brooke Bauer. Deep pokey to the corner for Florida State. By far one of the best duels that we have seen in the sand this week in Gulf Shores. UCLA has had two set points. You have to win by two. They will have a third on the service error. The team behind the team, all the players around this court supporting their teammates. Love the energy right now surrounding this court. You know the players are feeling that too. Third set point for UCLA. We play on! A third set will decide who goes to the championship. Incredible fight by the Bruin pair to push a third set, and you can just feel the energy. UCLA trying to get momentum on their side of the net. This is what they've trained for. This is what they have come to school for, a chance at playing for a championship. It will come down to a third set at the ones. No more drama than this on the beach all week. Florida State and UCLA, we played a 15 yes, winner moving on.
the nerves are here. We're both sweating. It's intense here for this one. It's all gonna come down to a third set. Either UCLA or Florida State is going to the national championship duel. Wanna let you know too, there is a guaranteed hour in between the conclusion of this match and that championship duel. So we will be have that coming up a little delayed for you here on ESPN2. Wow. It has been so back and forth, but it comes down to the ones. I mean, we couldn't have scripted this better. I mean, the drama, the intensity, and the fight from both programs, so incredible. Yeah, this volleyball has been so high level on the beach today. It's exactly what you want for a semifinal. Yes, and both teams showed up to play and are showing all that they have, just putting everything into it. These two teams, this is their first meet, their, excuse me, their third meeting this season, the first time they've met in the tournament this year. UCLA won the previous two on March 18th and on April 15th. But they've all come down to 3-2. Lexi Denenberg, Abby Van Winkle for UCLA, serving to Maddie Anderson and Brooke Bauer of Florida State. Going to 15 points, and Lexi Denenberg starts with an ace. Timely ace by Lexi Denenberg. She was looking for that in the first set, couldn't find it, but dials it up now for the Bruins to start off the third set. Christine Williamson is down on a packed court one. Is trying, UCLA is trying to hone in and take advantages of the weaknesses that they see on the other side of the court. Metzger said they want to put the pressure on them and not get tentative themselves. And then Lexi looked at, at Abby and said, I, there's no one else that I'd rather be than with us. We have nothing to lose. And they had a point scoring opportunity that got away from them there. Brooke Bauer and Maddie Anderson have given this UCLA ones all they can handle. Denenberg, it's out, but it was touched, so a point for UCLA. Lexi Denenberg is going down swinging. She's come out aggressive. First set, she was a little tentative offensively. Florida State able to pull away. Lexi Denenberg played at the ones last season with Savvy Simo. She was a part of that UCLA team that lost to USC in the championship duel. She would love another shot at it. Brooke Bauer ate that up. Good defensive touches. Denneberg really put on her track shoes in between sets. She has been touching way more balls defensively. That one just drifts a little too tight to the net. Brooke Bauer cleans things up for Florida State. Good redirect by her. The set will go very quickly. We only play to 15 points. They'll switch sides every five points. Service error by Anderson. Slight advantage to the Bruins on the first side change. Brooke Niles Lucena doing the slow walk and talk, strategizing, and then Stein Metzger with his top pair. Both head coaches on this court, this lone court remaining. Both have had great seasons this year, over 32 wins for both of these clubs. Both top five seeds in this tournament. the tape a Brooke Bauer will take it they are playing for so much right now remember Florida State trying to get back in the championship duel for the first time since 2018 if UCLA advances they would face USC in the title duel for the third straight tournament but first things first got to finish this set Brooke Bauer grazes Van Winkle's block. Brooke Bauer defensively, really nice eye work. She's watching her hitter and then reading the ball off of her hand. And if Abby Van Winkle's gonna be tentative, that plays into Brooke Bauer's game. 
plays by UCLA end up with Florida State scoring easily. Brooke Bauer, she's a big defender in the backcourt. It's six foot one. She's able to go over the block of Abby Van Winkle. And that's interesting because we know UCLA's got power both Denenberg and Van Winkle. Yeah, that's the pressure at the net by Maddie Anderson. And obviously this moment is big. Denenberg's attack. Florida State got there, but couldn't get the second contact. It's a one-point set. Abby Van Winkle had an unbelievable save on a for sure block point from Florida State at the beginning of that rally to save the Bruins in that point. Time to regroup here. Sand everywhere as these two pairs play for their team's seasons. Direct there by Maddie Anderson. Two point advantage on the switch. Oh, Holly, let's go back to that play you were talking about, Van Winkle. Tough serve to Denneberg and then off the block. Look at how low Abby Van Winkle goes to cover that ball and then a nice dig on the other set by Maddie Anderson. A retreating block dig by Abby Van Winkle. Another block touch and chance to score. This time, Lexi Denneberg, right side, chops it nice and sharp. Florida State can't handle it. You saw how low she got to save that point. Nothing is coming easy for either side. In! Abby Van Winkle had two inches to hit that ball, and she tags the line. Good, aggressive swing outside the block. Look at how much room she has because Brooke Bauer was moving into the block and just tags the outside of the line. Maddie Anderson can go down the line too. Good approach there. Looked like she was going to go angle and that held the defender Lexi Denneberg in the angle. They're getting more aggressive with their attacks. I agree, and Abby Van Winkle at six foot two, she's got really nice range. Stein Metzger talks about she's tough to stop. That time just going high and hard cross court. to that antenna, she takes up a lot of room. Very dangerous blocker close to that antenna. Look how much room she takes up. Nice left hand press by Abby Van Winkle. Her block has been so solid. Van Winkle so experienced. Pulling off, handles that volleyball nicely and then gets the swing down the line. That play right there is one of the things that makes Abby Van Winkle so special. She's a great blocker, but she can retreat off the net. She's got great ball control on the pull. And you see pulling, stepping back from the net. She was able to control that. And now UCLA leads by a point only going to 15.
service error. All tied up. It's a back and forth battle. I mean, you're trying to create those opportunities with your tough serve and missing long is better than missing in the net. They can still play that ball. Yeah, you're making those the defenders make a decision about whether they're going to touch it or not. Denneberg ripped it. Lexi Denneberg tight set to the net and she powers through that block. Good up and down set out of the middle of the court. Brooke Bauer sitting in the angle waiting for that particular attack, but too much heat. Back and forth we go. You have to win by two, though. shot very well executed and it's so deep in the court even if the defender was trying to get that it would be a tough ball to come up with high contact point perfectly executed rainbow to the corner Maddie Anderson's block has really affected this match and also bringing the offense as there's a service error from Brooke Bauer UCLA has been going after her in serve receive and it looks like they want her to attack wide close to that antenna so Abby Van Winkle can have an effect on the play. Almost the same spot to that back corner again for Anderson. Lexi Denneberg is anticipating that line shot and she's taking one step too early and that's why Maddie Anderson's taking advantage of that cross court. Watch Lexi Denneberg on the left side of your screen. She takes a step and Maddie Anderson redirects it to the corner. So the side switch, not only for the players, but also for the fans and the teammates following their pair. A season of work coming down to this set. Both teams just five points away. Anderson saved it, she corralled it. Can she kill it? Last over, over, over. Yeah. Great job by Brooke Bauer. Yeah. <laughs> and the kill, a one point advantage, FSU. Brooke Bauer, wonderful read defensively in the backcourt. And she is so calm, cool, and collected. I mean, what a play at this point in the match. Smart poke. Really nice court vision there. And it's tough with Brooke Bauer. It's six foot one. She's long in the backcourt, can take up a lot of space. Well, she's made UCLA have to get creative with their offense. set Lexi Denenberg didn't have time to get on top of it the talk from Lexi Denenberg right 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 and then a last second adjustment left in Abby Van Winkle Here's the late call. It's going to be interesting to see what the separator is with these two. I mean, it has been one point here, one point there. It's about who makes a play at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anderson. Yeah. That set came a little bit off the net, but Maddie Anderson, good aggressive swing towards the middle of the court. 
here. Look at these two for Florida State taking their time. They come together connected. Volunteer assistant coach Nick Lucena giving them an earful, encouraging them to make that push. Stein Metzger is working with his pair on the UCLA side. A race to 15 points. I feel like we've been playing this duel for a lifetime. Seems like it. It drops in. Dual point, Florida State. Are you kidding me, Brooke Bauer? In the right place at the right time with control. Late move, overhand dig with control to the backcourt and a kill off the dig. That is incredible. Timeout called. Dual point. It is 14 to 12 in this third set. It is dual point Florida State looking for their third appearance in the final. How do you regroup here for UCLA down two? Well, it's all about the first contact, right? They need a good pass. They need to stay aggressive. Stein Metzger is probably telling this pair what FSU is doing defensively and what can work. Also a pass, a good pass, moving, running a back set, trying to open things up. What's been working for Florida State? Well, really late moves defensively has been working. Brooke Bauer is making some great reads and Maddie Anderson has taken up a lot of space at the net. On the other side, Brooke Niles and Nick Lucena scheming defensively, trying to figure out a way to score this next point. One point is all Florida State needs. The winner will face USC in the championship in an hour. Patty Anderson and Brooke Bauer have been exceptional today. But so have Lexi Dinnenberg and Abby Van Winkle. I mean, this has been such a well-played match. Well, their response in the second set when they were down to push it into this third set was incredible. It comes down to this. See Dinneberg still going. Yeah! Abby Van Winkle grabbed the line, my goodness. What a cover play. First, Lexi Dinneberg gets blocked by Maddie Anderson, but she chases, covers, and Abby Van Winkle with the kill. UCLA's got to do it again. Second dual point, Florida State. Florida State's going to ice the server timeout. I've got goosebumps. I do too. Holly and I are both standing up. We couldn't even be on the edge of <laughs> our chair. <laughs> exactly, we're pacing. <laughs> this has been quite a duel. Yeah, just so well played. We started with the twos and the fours. Both of those matches went to third sets, kind of foreshadowing what we would see in the second flight with the ones, threes, and fives. It has come down to the ones in a third set. Stein Metzger drawing up a defensive play for UCLA. Here is our bracket. We will come on air at the top of the hour for this championship duel, but there has to be about an hour in between the conclusion of this duel and the next, so we will have a preview for you ready to go for USC and whoever comes out of this duel, either UCLA or Florida State. Stay with us here on ESPN2. We will crown a champion this afternoon, but first we have to send one more team to that championship duel.
Huge moment right here. Second dual point, Florida State. Maddie Anderson. Florida State will play for a national title. The marathon of a semifinal finishes at the ones. Maddie Anderson, Brooke Bauer, the heroes for Florida State. Brooke Bauer with the last tap down, but wow, what a match. You don't even want anybody to lose that match because it was so well played, but Florida State finally earns a spot in that championship game. Florida State is back making their third appearance in the championship. They have never won a national championship. Last time they were there was in 2018 when they lost to UCLA. Look at this point. Starts with Maddie Anderson. Attacking in the angle, Lexi Denneberg, one arm stab, but Brooke Bauer redirect. Here it is again. Watch Bauer's reaction. Just a machine. Incredible. Bauer and Anderson got pushed to the limit, but responded and win it for their school. Look, this could have gone either way, but that had to be the best duel that we've had all week. I agree. Incredible, and with everything on the line, it was a two-point difference, that's it. This UCLA team, we are gonna see them. Don't you forget it. We're gonna see them next year. They've got a lot of talent coming back, but right now, Florida State has got to refocus. They will have about an hour to regroup, and Brooke Niles and her Seminoles will play for a national title. Our championship duel is set. USC, the defending champions, will take on Florida State.